Hi, welcome to another Flourishing Fibers Wood Embroidery Kit Tutorial. Today, we're stitching up these beautiful key rings. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. For this design here, we're going to start by embroidering the center. And then we're going to go ahead and create the leaves. And then the final thing will be the outside shape. Okay, before we get started, I want to mention that each of the key rings come with instructions on um, exactly how many strands of thread are needed to complete that particular key ring. Um, it's really important that you guys follow that guideline regardless of what color you're using because the holes were specifically designed for that, that amount of thread. So for this design here, it's going to be six strands, but we are going to be doubling it up. So you only need to pull three. And once we double it up, that will make six. We're going to start with uh, embroidering the entire center from here to there, just using back stitch. We're going to start from the bottom and we're going to leave a small amount of thread in the back we're going to just hold it down with our finger and start working our way up and as we do that we could go ahead and start tacking it down so back stitch is really simple you just go uh up one down the other and you just go in that in that pattern and these could have a little bit of tension so there we go we've completed our first uh, stitches, which is just back stitch all the way down up to that hole. So now that we've completed our center stem using back stitch, uh, we need to now stitch the leaves. And these are done using a weaving technique. So it's really important that we complete all of these first before we move on to the outer shape. Uh, because if you do the outer shape first and you try to weave these, you will easily be snagging some of the uh, thread surrounding it. So uh, the way we do the leaves, we have to do one at a time. I'm going to start at the bottom. You're going to come up that hole and down here. And not a lot of tension. You kind of want to leave it a little bit loose. And we're going to come back up again, that same hole. Okay. And then not a lot of tension. Now we're going to split these threads by three. So we are doing three and three. Hopefully that makes, hopefully you could see that division there. So we're going to go below the first three to the right. Well, I'm sorry, to my left. And now we're going to go split the stitch again where, where we initially divided it into three and three and now we're going to go on the right side below it and now with the back side of your needle kind of push it down a little bit and now we're going to go back down the left side and continue Kind of pushing the little weave down to kind of create a nice shape. Then we go back to our center and we're going to just go below that and to the right. And that's what we're going to continue to do until we complete the little leaf shape. Keep pushing it down. Not a lot of tension here. It's just light tension and just keep forming and pushing down. You can see it's already starting to form. And just keep going until you get to the very top and it gets a little bit tighter.
then you could continue pushing down until you pretty much are happy with the shape. One more. And now just to finish it, you're going to go down that hole and tug and kind of shape it as you go. So we're just going to keep going up the roll and then, you know, go come back down. As you create more of these petals, you're going to see it's going to get more difficult. Um, you could easily snag one or the other one. So just be careful, maneuver your needle however you need to. To avoid taking any of surrounding stitches I'm gonna go ahead and come back with the rest of them completed and I will show an alternative way to complete the shape now that we're done with all the shapes from the inside we're gonna move on and work on the uh, shape of the leaf now you could go ahead and just simply do a back stitch um, or you could also do chain stitch which uh, for that, you will need two straight stitches on each side, the right and the left. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and continue on this side. So you're going to go up hole. We're going to say that's hole number three. So this is one, two, three. And you're going to go under that first little back stitch. And back down hole three and we're just going to go ahead and go around the shape making those little links so now i'm in hole number four i go below that first little chain link and back down where i came up from and we're just going to continue when you come up and you're going to go below the the link make sure that you're going in this way as opposed to that way i think this way will be um, more chances of you snagging some of that other thread so make sure you go this way here we're going to stop we're going to secure our thread and then we're going to go ahead and start back up again from the bottom just the way we did on that side So if you do decide to do the outer shape and chain stitch, this hole here is going to be a little bit tight. So what you're going to do is you're going to take some pliers and uh, use it to help guide the needle down. And then use the pliers to help you pull it out. If you want to add a little bit more weight to the little end of the stem there. What I like to do, I like to go back up that bottom hole. And I'm just gonna whip it. And so, and then go back down. So now we could go ahead and secure our final stitches. We need to trim everything pretty close to get it ready for our backer. So here are the two keychains, one using the chain stitch, one using the back stitch. I've separated my thread into three strands and I'm going to go ahead and double it up to make six. And for this one, we're gonna go ahead and start off by uh, stitching it and backstitch, just the way it is here. But then what I'm gonna go ahead, I'm also gonna go ahead and do a whipping stitch, just to add a little bit more um, 
more volume to it and see how that looks. So I went in through hole one and I am going to go ahead, leave a good amount of thread behind and I'm going to secure it by tacking it down with my other stitches. And because I want to keep a consistent pattern with all the little lines of each rainbow, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the same color to stitch this curve and then stitch this curve. Now when you get to a T section where there's going to be uh, three the thread is going to be entering the same hole three times. There's going to be a little bit more tension. So you can use your pliers to pull through or, you know, just give it a good tug and you should be fine. So once I was done completing all the back stitching, I decided to try and do a whipping stitch to this keyring to see how it would turn out. Because there was already a little bit of tension with the holes, I decided to just do two strands. So that's technically one strand folded over to, to equal two. And what you will see in a little bit is me realizing that I kind of messed up. I should have really planned ahead and thought this through a little bit more because as I was uh, stitching, I really almost had to bend the needle to avoid snagging some of the, the threads. So I think what I should have done to prevent that is as I completed an, an arc, I should have whipped it and then moved on to the next. And I think that probably would have been a better workflow. Adding a whipping stitch to this key ring, if you want to add more weight to the lines, I think it's a nice solution. But overall, I didn't really think it added too much more to the design. So I don't know. I think I prefer it with just the back stitch. To stitch up the little clover, we're going to be using a combination of straight stitches, uh, back stitch, and, and two small chain stitches here at the bottom. For this key ring, make sure that you are using two strands folded over to make a total of four. I think I'm going to start off by making the straight stitches for the little leaf. Since I'm using the lighter color, I want to make sure that I'm not cutting a very long strand of thread because you will see that the, the thread will get a little bit dirty due to the cutting of the laser. There's like some staining left behind. You want to leave the thread not too long so you could change it once it gets a little, a little dingy. I've completed the little straight stitches for the little leaf. I'm going to go ahead and do the outer shape using back stitch. Now that we're done uh, completing the back stitch all around, we're going to go ahead and do all the center lines. That's going to include um, the ones here, that little cr cross shape, plus these longer straight stitches going down the center of each clover leaf. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by doing the, the longer center stitches. Taking it from the center out, each one. All right, and now we're going to go ahead and do the center cross in the middle. Now, if you feel like there's a little bit uh, too much resistance, you could definitely use your pliers here. So uh, we are done with the shape of the clover. Now we're going to go ahead and just add the little stem. For that, we're going to do a few little chain stitches. So this here, 
it's going to be just a single straight stitch and then we're going to be hooking on to that so that one has more resistance you're definitely going to need your pliers to help you push down the needle and also pull it back out from the back all right now you have that little first straight stitch and we're going to be going below that straight stitch and back down to create our first little link and we're going to be doing the same thing here going below that little link and back down and secure our thread For this keychain, we will be doing back stitch and then we're going to be doing a whipped stitch to it. We're going to be using two strands of thread, fold it over to make four. And because the whipping could get a little bit problematic when uh, stitching, we're going to do one letter at a time. We're going to go ahead and back stitch the letter H and then we're going to come back and do the whipping stitch to it. And then we're going to move on to the O doing the back stitch and then the whipping and so on. Leave a tail behind to hold down. And we're just gonna go ahead and back stitch the letter H. As you're stitching, make sure that you're tacking down some of that thread from the back side. This stitch here connects to that one there. So it's the third one from the bottom. Now for the whipping stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and just use one single strand, fold it over to make a total of two. I'm gonna go ahead and secure my thread. We're starting by going at the top and we're gonna go below the first back stitch. And we're gonna come down. We can pull our thread down and continue going below our stitches. And when we get to the end, we could go ahead and go back down. And I think it'll just be easier if I start back up here. And same thing, we're just gonna go below the back stitch. Last stitch here, we're just gonna go back down that third hole from the bottom. And there we go. We have our first letter. If you have two needles in hand, this is a number five embroidery needle. If you happen to have another one, it, that'll speed up the process so you don't have to actually re-thread your needle every time. You could already have it threaded with the right amount of threads and in the colors that you're using. And this is gonna make this project go a little bit quicker. To completely finish off your key rings, we need to protect the threads on the back side. You could do that in two ways. You can leave the thread exposed or you could cover it up with the felt that was included in your kit. For both of these options, we're gonna be securing the thread. We're gonna be using glue. I'm using Eileen's original tech glue, but you could also use Elmer's glue, anything that dries clear, not yellow. If you want to cover up using the felt, I recommend you using a super glue. Here we have our two finished pieces. So for both of these, you're just gonna put a blob of glue on them and then you're just gonna massage it in. You just wanna cover up the thread. You don't need to cover up the, the wood with this. Try to get those little ends and kind of make comb everything down. 
And if you get them on the wood, it's not a big deal, but it's just you don't really need it on the wood. All right, so that needs about 30 minutes to dry. Once it's completely dry, if you wanna leave it exposed, you're done. But if you wanna use the felt, this is how we're gonna do that. So the glue is already hard and it's pretty stiff. So you're gonna take your felt and what we're gonna do, we're gonna lay down some of the, the crazy glue or the super glue just around the edges. We don't need to put any more glue in the center design. And you're just gonna go ahead and kind of align this edge to that top edge, okay? Now your felt is a little bit oversized because we're gonna trim it to size at the end. I'm just going around. It doesn't need too much. And I'm taking my felt, lining it up at the top, pressing it down, and then we're just gonna let it dry for about five minutes. All right, a few minutes have passed and I'm pretty sure this is completely dry. Can't really see a lot of lifting. Now what you need to do is make sure that you have some really nice sharp scissors and we're just gonna trim the excess. And you just kind of want to follow first just cutting all the straight edges and then we'll do the little curved corners. And there we go. That is the way the finished keyring looks with the felt.